introductory crash course into the reproduction tract of the female and also why they should be doing this, how to check their breasts and why she's doing the pap smears. You can see the nurse working here with the doctor, Dr. Beta. She's also a member of the Bali Command Club. Uh, she's a acupuncturist plus doctor. Uh, she never stopped all day with skin diseases and things like this. Keep going soon. Yeah, the nurse, the nurse is Anta. She now works full time for us. She's on her motorbike. She spends, she will spend two days in each village, at each banjo. Not necessarily in the clinical rooms. If there's people sick, she'll go up the mountain to them. Um, she'll go down the street to them. She'll go wherever she's needed to go. And this day sort of settled it for us. We had three nurses turn up, but this girl didn't even stop. She just hooked up her, what do you call it, stethoscope, and went to work. And she got her head down, bum up, and she never stopped. And so she sold us, we hired her that day on the spot after that, to become our first full-time nurse in the clinic up there. So she's working with us full time now and everything's up and running. <coughs> this is a tip these are typical some of the diseases, skin diseases that seem to be prevalent in most of them. Things that we'd take for granted that you'd fix with a bit of cortisone cream or some antibiotic creams. And these people, some of them can get quite deep in their legs because they just uh, the infection just gets deeper and deeper with them because they're not treated. Mm -hmm. You can see the type of people that came. This gentleman came from about halfway up the mountain on those two sticks to see a doctor. 66 years old, never seen a doctor in his life. <clears throat> As a young guy, we had two eye specialists there on the day and they were testing all the children first and then the women and the guys afterwards for eye uh, things that we're doing. Um, there's not much the doctors could do. They prescribed creams, some uh, eye medicines, which were quite expensive actually, for the people whose cataracts were really quite bad. But since uh, doing this medicine day, we attracted the attention of <coughs> the John Forsyth Foundation. And I'll put this out here for you to read. And they've committed now to come to our next medicine day, which we'll be having probably end of January, early February. They will bring their huge medical bus they operate in the bus, they cut out the cataracts, they do everything on the spot. <clears throat> so this is a fantastic plus for us. It's a donation. This foundation actually started with a grant of two Rotary Clubs 21 years ago. <laughs> and now they run six buses. They've got a special bus done so that it fits into a Hercules plane, drives in and drives off when they go to other islands, the smaller islands. and. John Forsyth and his other doctor, the eye specialist, come from Perth. They're there five days every month doing major operations, free of charge for everybody. Mm -hmm. So I'll pass this around. You can pass it around the table. And you can walk <laughs> You can see them lined up here. People were patient. Uh, there was no hassling. They just waited and waited until they got seen. We also had a dentist with us, and she spent most of her time in the school. And the Sunday before we went up there, Sue spent most of our, and I spent all day Sunday, those little plastic bags contain a toothbrush, toothpaste, soap, <coughs> and a little song brochure on washing your hands and keeping them clean. So basically, the nurse went over there, everyone got one of these, taught the children how to sing the song, it's a bit of hygiene and teaching them how to keep their hands clean and wash their hands after going to the toilet, eating food, before eating, after eating, and mainly washing their hands. One thing that we've learned in the studies over the time is we can put fresh village, fresh water onto the village, and we really change the life of those people in the village by about 5%. If we can teach them a bit of health and hygiene, we'll change their life by 37%. So there's a huge difference. One thing is to have the water, <coughs> the next thing is to capitalise on having that water to be able to teach them how to use it well and use it wisely. Mm -hmm. This is a dentist at the school and she's teaching everybody now how to brush their teeth. We had in the school, we asked them first to put their hands up. Of all those <coughs> that had a toothbrush at home, and probably about 
hundred kids stick their hands up out of the two hundred kids. So we said, how many people at home have two toothbrushes? About five kids put their hands up. We said, how many kids have three toothbrushes? No people put their hands up. They generally take one toothbrush and the whole family uses it. One after the other. So, Yeah, toothbrush would last them for around five years, they tell us. <laughs> so, I'll give you. So, these are all some of the things you learn as you go along. You can see the dentist here then went through most of the students, looked at their teeth. And surprisingly enough, some of these students weren't as bad as the last lot, but there's still a lot of work to be done there on their teeth. Mm -hmm. So our next step will be to get dental floss and to get some things to brush in, you know, do their gums and their teeth with, and try and help them that way. And the dentist said that the next day, <coughs> he'll bring his toolkit, whatever that means. <laughs> and I think that means a lot of kids losing some teeth. <laughs> because some of them, when you look in their mouth, and I sat there looking with him, and you look back in their mouth with a flashlight, the back teeth are just black and crumbling. How these kids are not in a huge amount of pain is beyond me. But we certainly would be. So our objective is to get all the children with their own toothbrushes. Brushing their teeth daily, it's a start. And washing their hands. You can see this, this guy over there, he helped his father down to come and see the doctors. You, sort of, you look at the despair on their faces, it's, it's heartbreaking. And you can see up at each oak we have, we have our sign, our banners that go up that advertise the fact that this is a joint social program with Bailey Man, Hope Island, and a club called Turtiganga. You can see here the, the skin doctors. We have two skin specialists treating them, uh, which were treating all the people with skin. This is the sort of thing we hope to catch early. This little girl is eight months old. <laughs> and she's got a huge abscess under her eye. <laughs> Doctors had a look, so we've got to get her to John Forsyth to try and get that abscess removed, otherwise she's going to go blind. <laughs> and a disease, once it busts, it'll come into both eyes and she'll lose her sight or kill her. <laughs> you can look at these people, they just sit, they wait, patient, and they wait for their turn to get to the doctors. Put this up for you. This was two days after we'd finished the medical day. Two of the Balinese girls come over and bring us over these newspaper clippings. <laughs> the newspapers and said, you won't believe it, but you guys made the front page of the newspaper. <laughs> Which we did. So that is the front page of the newspaper. You can read a little bit on the left hand side. What is the headline on the back? The headline is Rotary Club, Gila, uh, Medical, Social, uh, direction, Karagasan. In other words, they're saying it was a major social medical function held by Rotary. And down the side here, it tells you names the Rotary clubs which were functioning. We didn't even know these people were at the at there. We were too busy with our head down and ass up doing what we had to do for the day. So, in summary, you know, our nurse will now spend two days in each village treating minor ailments, assisting and educating in the schoolrooms in the way of health and hygiene. Mm -hmm. To ensure that if we catch any serious problems, then they're going to be transported to the local Pucis Mass or to the hospital. <coughs> the nice thing that's taken quite a while to get here is the support of the Pucis Mass, which is a local medical clinic that local people can go to, and from the health centre in the in the Indonesian government. We now have their support and their approval and they're working with us. So when we get people, we'll pay the 6,000 rupee for them if that's what it takes to get them into the Puskas Mass to get them treated you know, properly with my equipment if it's a serious thing. The nurse can help the people if it's skin disease, it's coughs, it's colds, it's flus, it's all this sort of stuff, eyes, nose, uh, worms, which are a major problem, head lice, which is the next major thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, that we've got to try and arrest within the families. And 
to work through it. We've got people up there with